to you with another video. And as you can tell from the title above, today's video will be questions that you can ask yourself before starting your business. And not only will I be asking you guys these questions and showing you guys these questions, I will also be answering them myself to give you guys a taste of why I want to start my business and things like that so you can get a little background information about me. So, of course, of course, of course, I know you guys are wondering, like, where is she at? I don't see the green wall. Yes, it is a different scenery. I am downstairs in my living room, and I decided why not sit on the couch with you guys, get real intimate, get real little subtle. And if you cannot tell, your girl got a waist trainer on, yeah. If you don't know me and you're just not getting to know me, your girl likes to add the X add at the end of everything, because that's just me. Like, if you look at my Snapchat name, it's Braceface with an X at the end. You look at my name, it's Maze Beauty, and the X is silent. Everybody would want to say Maze X and all that extra stuff, but that's not it. But let me start rambling on and get back to this question. So, like I said, question number one is, what is your why? And the reason why I started my business is because... I've always had this vision and this passion ever since I was a little girl. Like, I've had video games where I was styling and designing my own outfits or models, like those fashion little virtual games. I used to watch Beyonce perform or Alicia Keys or any artist perform, and I'll be sitting there drawing in my little book, stick figures, but with the full outfit on and everything. Like, I just had the... Sorry, I felt like I had the gloves on my teeth. But yeah, I just had the drive and the passion for a very long time to do this. So it's just like, even though I got older, it never stopped. Like, I took fashion design class in high school and things like that. So it's just like, it was something that was already in me. But when I got older and I started to realize, um, why am I not pursuing this? Why am I not doing this? It just made my hunger for my passion grow even more. And I also wanted to leave something for my future kids and leave a little legacy so, you know, when I do have kids, they have something that they can fall back on. I could turn it into a family business, you know, leave it for them as a legacy. They can work on that and, you know, learn from their mother's business so they can be like, okay, I want to be my own entrepreneur. I want to develop my own business ideas. Yeah, we're running this for mom because she had this, but at the end of the day, I want to build my own thing. And I want to be able to learn the fundamentals and the skills and the knowledge behind everything so I can just pass it down to my future, to my generation, and to y'all, pretty much. Question number two. How will it impact other areas of your life? Sorry if I'm looking down a lot. Like I said, I've written down notes and answered these questions for you guys. So, yeah. So, the reason, um, not the reason, other areas that it has impacted in my life is my planning process. It's made me more organized with how I do things. It made me really challenge myself and it helped me develop a growth mindset. So instead of me always saying, oh my gosh, there's a problem, there's a problem. Now it's like, oh, there's a problem. Boom, I got a solution for it. There's a problem. All right, I'm about to find my way around it. Oh, it's the ob obstacle. I'm going to jump over it. Um, I also, it also helps me build my wardrobe back up. I ain't going to lie. Like, I haven't been buying myself clothes because I've been wanting to invest and to fund my business. So with me buying items, I'm not only buying items to sell, I'm buying items to try on, I'm buying items to test out, I'm buying items to promote on myself so that I can show you guys what it looks like. And it's also helping me build up and practice more in my modeling career. I have been modeling, if you guys haven't noticed, I modeled off and on for like about three, four years now. 
And with this happening, I'm able to stay more in tune with that and more in tune with things that I love in my life. Um, mm, I said that already, growth mindset. Oh yeah, it also taught me how to structure myself and to budget my money. Like I can have, let's say with the stimulus check that we all have gotten, we all got 1200. I was able to budget it to, to a point where I was able to invest into my business, get the business essentials that I need, get the inventory that I need, the products that I'm selling, and still have stuff left over for myself to where I can go splurge and do whatever I want to do, but I'm not going to do that. But it did help me learn how to budget, and it helped me build um, a more understanding of financial stability. For real. Um, question number three. How do you define success as an entrepreneur? Success as an entrepreneur is growth. Success as an entrepreneur is being uncomfortable. The only way that I feel successful is if I'm doing things that makes me feel like I shouldn't. If I'm doing things that makes me feel like, uh, should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? Because it's taking me out of that realm where I was, was where I was sitting there and just very comfortable in my struggle. I we've all been there, done that, where we're okay with just sitting there and watching the next person accomplish what we want to accomplish in life, watching the next person get to those certain steps in life that we want to get to. So success to me is uncomfortability. For real, for real. If you can't be successful and comfortable at the same time. Because if you're comfortable where you're at, you ain't wrong. If you're comfortable where you're at, your business ain't going up numbers. If you're comfortable where you're at, you're not reaching the goals that you set for yourself. Success to me is my relationship with God. Constantly building that relationship with God. Constantly having that one-on-one. -on -one, constantly speaking to Him as He is my best friend, which He is, is my success. Without God, I wouldn't be nowhere. Like, even though I haven't launched my business yet and I'm just going through the motions with you guys and let you guys know the process that I'm taking and the process that you can take and things like that is successful to me. The fact that I'm sitting here and able to be consistent with my videos, that's success to me. The fact that I'm able to sit right here and smile with you all and not feel so much anxiety or so much depression or be talking down on myself that's success to me straight like that success is me so say that with me success is me i'm talking about you say that to yourself success is me you leaving certain parts that you've left in your life the negativity the struggles the hard time and you've gotten to a place where you never thought you would see yourself, you never thought that you would get out of that hole, this, you've reached success. Question number four. Do you need a co-founder or can you do it alone? When starting your business, you got to realize, do you have the strength to be productive with everything by yourself in the beginning process? Or do you need a team member to be on your behind, to help motivate you and help push you. Right now, the, the type of person that I am, I like to be very hands-on and I like to do things my way and I like to do things by myself until I can find those people that can mesh well with me, that can understand that I'm the leader here, I like my things done a certain way and you have to follow it that way. So no, honestly for me, I don't think I need a co-founder at this moment. But I know other people have co-founders and their co-founders may be their mom, their dad, their sister, somebody older and that knows them but that can help them stay on track. Me right now, I know my vision and certain people around me don't see the vision for what I see it to be. So I can't have them be a partner with me because it's like going to deter me away from what I'm trying to do. If you guys understand what I mean. like. I, the way that I am, I have to solidly do this as a solo person so I get a certain point in life and God is just throwing those people at me and adding the people that I need 
to mix in this pot right now. I honestly believe and feel like I need to do this solely so I don't need a co-founder. But this is a question for you. Do you feel like you need a co-founder co for your business or can you do it alone? And keep in mind guys, all the questions that I'm asking to you, take your notes, write down these questions, answer them for yourself, or even answer them down in the comment section down below. We can have a whole conversation about it, okay? I don't know everything, you don't know everything, but I would love to learn from you guys as well as you guys are learning from me. And no, I don't have a co-founder, but I do have a mentor who is doing the business her way and she has her things going the way that she has going for her. All she does is check up on me every day to see what I'm doing and making sure that I'm on track, but she's not in to my business. Next question. Next question. Next question. Question number five. How do you need to upgrade your mindset? When I started my business, I didn't have a mindset. I just felt like I'm going to get up and go and just do whatever. But that didn't work for me because the way that I was thinking and how down I was and how low I was, I was always being negative. I was always saying, this ain't gonna work, this ain't gonna happen, this ain't gonna be what it is, this ain't gonna be what I thought it was gonna be, yada, 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 yada. But in all reality, I had to be willing to learn and be willing to restructure my mind from out of the gutter. I had to be willing to just say, I wanna fight, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna keep going and keep going and keep going and run this race until it's over and it's not over until I say it's done. It's not over until God says it's done. So it's like with me, I literally had to change a lot of the negativity within me to positivity. And it's like, it's hard going from that when you was once positive and then had things happen in your life to bring you down to a certain level where you feel like you had hit rock bottom but you know for a fact that you don't want to live this way no more like i had to re-strengthen myself and come back and say girl get your life get it together take several seats think about what you're doing think about what you're trying to do and really grow so with that i had to learn how to also shut my mouth a lot of times I can keep talking, keep going, and don't care what you have to say because I want it to be my way. But I also had to learn to take constructive criticism for what it is and not take it as somebody talking down on me or bringing me down. No, they're trying to tell me, hey, look, pause. What you're doing is great, but you could do it 10 times better if you do this, that, and the third. Especially somebody more knowledgeable and wiser than me in certain areas of my life. Like, you have to be mature enough to know when to keep your mouth shut you have to be mature enough to know when it's time to listen you have to be mature enough to know when it's like okay i don't want to be a kid no more it's time for me to grow up and stop you know worrying about oh what my mom will say or if she's going to take it it's time for me to take care of myself so with that i literally had to upgrade my mindset from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset I had to put my focus strictly on my business and where I can where I see myself in life. Like honestly, I know a lot of our parents and a lot of our elders would tell us that our twenties and our teens are the time that we're supposed to live our best lives and have nope, and it was not. Your teens and your twenties is your time to get it together. That's your time to learn how to be financially stable that's your time to pursue the business that you want to start so by the time you hit your 30s and your 40s you just live your best life willy-nilly all free having nothing to worry about trying to start a business at that time it's harder to do it when you're older than it is to do it when you're younger and fresh we got a lot coming our way we got it sweet honestly so it's like I literally had to change my mindset and learn how to focus and also learn how to sacrifice. So it's a lot of things that I like to do. There's a lot of things that I like to buy. It's a, it's a lot. But I had to learn, okay, if I'm going to be this place in my business at this time, I literally got to stop getting my nails done all day, every day. I got to stop buying wigs all day, every day. I got to stop going out with my friends and my girlfriends and taking pictures and being all cute and wanting to twerk at something in the club and da 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 You know, like, I literally had to focus, sacrifice, and change my mindset from a fix to a growth mindset. 
Guys, I'm sorry. I know my other videos have been like about 20 minutes long. I'm going to try to make this video shorter. So I'm not going to keep talking. I'm literally going to answer these questions and be out of your hair. Because your girl know how to talk and I can talk for days. Question number six. How do you need to upgrade your habits? <sighs> okay. So one thing that I want to tell you, and I can't stress this enough. Before you start... And before you start to think about ordering stacks and stacks of clothes or stacks and stacks of this or just being like, all I need to order is this, that, and the third, and boom, sell it and put it out there. No. I had to learn what it means to save. I had to grow. Like, I ain't going to lie. Like, with me and my testimony, God had to take a lot of things away from me that was fun and simple and easy like he opened endless doors for me that on me not paying attention to and me not thinking right about it i sat there and let pass me by i was playing and being young and dumb and thinking that oh i got enough time to do this that and the third but god had to snatch it all away from me and let me know and understand what it's like to be flat out broke to let me know what it's like to be to struggle and not have nothing to help you survive your day to day and that I had to depend on him. That I couldn't just say, oh, I got the money and I, I'm good, whatever. No, I had to depend on him. So the minute that everything was taken away and it was solely just me and him, like I learned what it's like to budget. I learned what it's like to save. So I realized, dang, I had all this money and I could have just saved and did this, that, and the third with it. And what did I do with it? I got nothing to show for it but all these clothes. The nails are broken now. I have no more acrylic to pop off. All I got is old pictures of how my nails used to look so cute. I don't even, I'm not even friends with these people no more. And I just spent all these money on, on these people. And it's just like, he had to take everything away from me for me to upgrade my habits. With that being said, after that's all said and done, I was able to really budget my time, budget my money, and budget myself to be able to become the boss that I want to be. And that's what, you, what I feel like you have to do. Like, you have to step back from your life and realize, okay, what can I save for later and what can I do right now? What's a liability and what's the asset? And with that I'm just a wake up, you know? How I did.